Greetings, friends. I'm about to be attacked by velociraptors, or at least their close relatives. You can probably hear them all around me here. <laughs> They're coming to visit me in the woods. Today, the subject is staying warm without a fire. This is a perfect day to really get yourself in trouble with the cold. I'm not going to tell the whole story here for brevity's sake, but often around the campfire I'll tell the story of the coldest I've ever been in my life. It wasn't during my naked overnight in the winter or falling through the ice. It was on a summer day, a little bit like this. You've got about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, a little bit less. You've got a wind going. It's been wet. Everything is wet. And improper clothing, just wearing cotton. This is when we start to lose heat from our bodies. And, you know, I'm, there's people out there way more skilled than me, but today, especially if it started to actually rain, rain, this could be really hard to get a fire going today. So, what do we do? We're out in a situation, it's raining on us, it's this cold, we can't get a fire going. We're in trouble, right? <laughs> you know, the odd thing about this is that sometimes we'll even get a fire going, but having that fire sometimes is not the benefit we think it is. I'm going to cover a lot of territory in this video, hopefully keep it fairly short, but I want to talk about the mechanisms of heat loss because that's really going to help us to think how can we keep ourselves warm in a situation like today plus rain. You can think of this as it's kind of a fairly simple equation. Here's my body and my body is self-generating heat. So we are quote warm blooded. So endotherms, meaning that we, we create heat and our body is always trying to establish an equilibrium. So it wants to keep my body at that 98.6 degrees essentially. And it's going to expend energy to do that. Now at the same time, on a day like today, my body is, is losing heat. And it does it through a, different, a few different mechanisms. And in a way, these mechanisms are kind of artificial in that we're, you know, it's always just transfer of, of heat from a warmer to a colder thing. <laughs> but we have different names for it, that transfer of heat loss, depending on, on the medium of flow, on the object or the substance that it's flowing into. And so understanding these gives us really a bonus when it comes to trying to preserve this heat. So the, the first thing that's happening here is, is radiation. And that just means that my body all the time, if you could look with infrared, you would see that there's heat emanating out from my body. The heating system inside of us is not super efficient and there's, there's always this waste, this waste heat that's going out into the air. Now, if I put clothing on me, then I start to slow down some of that radiant heat loss. If I would make a little tarp shelter and seal myself inside of it, then I'm going to radiate out some of that heat is trapped and that trapped air warms up and then I start to radiate less. So anything I can do to keep that radiant heat in on my body. If my clothes get wet, I start to get into another aspect of, of heat loss. And you know, some people put this under perspiration, but um, I'm just going to talk about any time that, it, that we have wet on our body. I'm not talking about being immersed in water here, but I've been sweating or the rain has kind of coated me. And 
that evaporates. And when there's evaporation, then there's this additional heat loss that happens. It's why sweating helps us to stay cool in the summer. But the same thing is gonna happen right now if it rains on me. And then even if the rain stops, this wind is coming along and it's evaporating. And that creates a very swift heat loss. And I'm gonna start getting cold really, really quickly. So obviously here we're thinking about how can we not have moisture on our skin? And this asks us, again, to keep ourselves sheltered from the rain, to make sure that we don't sweat if we are gonna be moving or exercising. And down here, notice, I have wet ground. And so that wet ground, if I sit down on that, my butt's gonna get wet and then I'm gonna get that evaporative heat loss going and I'm gonna be in trouble. The next one is convection. So today we've got this air moving by me. When this air moves by me, this wind, it's essentially grabbing the heat off of my body and carrying it away. And it's just going and it keeps doing that. If I sit in a stream, I'm gonna feel that water going over me and it keeps carrying that heat away from me. As opposed to if I sit in a, in a lake, I'm gonna actually start to warm up the water around me. There's gonna be a graphic difference between sitting in a lake of a, cold, a certain cold temperature and sitting in a moving stream of an equal temperature. Same thing, my, my ambient temperature might be a certain degree, so I said it's about 50 today. If there's no wind, that is gonna feel completely different than even if there's a little bit of wind coming. Shelter, again, right? This is why we think of shelter as the most important of the survival aspects often. Not always. If I'm, if I'm in an ambient temperature that doesn't make shelter necessary, but maintaining my body temperature. So here, I wanna make sure that the wind isn't coming by me. Right now I'm sitting right in the open, right, in the wind, and it would be much different if I was on the other side of a tree, a big tree out here, protected from the wind, or down in one of the little gullies over here. Lots of ways to protect ourselves, but thinking, how can I minimize that convective heat loss. Then there's conduction. This just means that if my body, my skin is gonna to touch another solid object, that there's a heat loss that goes out through here. And different of these solid objects have more power essentially to pull the heat out of us. If I sit down on a rock, it's gonna just suck the heat right out of me, that cold rock. Where if I sit down on a log that's the same temperature as the rock, it doesn't suck the heat, it doesn't have that same power. So with conduction, I wanna think, is there a way that I can separate myself from objects that pull that heat out of me? The ground, for instance, tends to pull a lot of heat out of me. Now, if I have a bunch of dry leaves or a bunch of dry pine needles on top of that ground, it's gonna reduce it. If I have a wool blanket under there, it's gonna reduce it. So, thinking about the objects that I'm touching. Now, those are the mechanisms of heat loss, but in a practical sense, what do we do? I'm gonna give a number of suggestions here that might really change up the game for you if you can't get a fire going and you need to stay warm. One is learn how to squat. Now that squat is, can't really see it here, but is flat footed and only my feet are touching the ground. My butt isn't touching the ground and I've just learned to sit down and get into a squat. Now, when I'm in that squat position, I 
just the bottom of my feet. If I have shoes on, there's insulation there. And I'm not sitting on this wet ground. If I sit on this wet ground, I'm going to start losing a lot of heat. But if I can keep myself in a squat, or if I just can't do a squat, I could be up on my, the balls of my feet. If I have that wool blanket, I could be setting it down underneath me. Now it's going to get wet and there's some disadvantages there. But that's better than me sitting on the ground and getting my butt wet. So learning how to squat, learning how to move our body. If you practice calisthenics or yoga, you've got the tools already. These are great tools for strengthening your body anyway. But if I am sitting in camp and here I'm going to touch the ground with my hand, not the greatest thing, but if I put it on a stick here, it's better. And I put my legs out straight so I'm just supporting myself on this one arm. Now this is starting to warm my body. My core is having to work here. And I could drop down, do a push up, come up onto the other one. And when I do this, I'm moving my body, right? I can do those squats stand, squat, and stand. I could do jumping jacks. Sometimes I've kept myself warm on cold nights when I can't get a fire going by just walking in circles, skipping in circles, dropping and doing push-ups, getting back up. I don't want to do exercises where I'm going to have to be laying on the ground. And then I'm losing that heat through conduction again. But here I'm using this internal heater that I have going. And it's remarkable how warm we can stay just by firing up that heater. Note that to fire that heater, it's really important that I have calories in me. So another great tip or trick is to eat. If you've got some food there and you've got a cold night coming, eat that food. Drink water. Stay hydrated. That is going to really help you to have fuel for that fire inside of you. It helps to think about this early. So if I'm on an outing and the night is coming and I know I might not have a fire that night. This happens to me because often I'm, if I'm doing a survival scenario with students and I know I've set it up so it's going to be really hard for them to get fire, that might mean that I have no fire too. So I need to think, and I encourage them to think, about almost being greedy with your heat. Early in the day, I'm already starting to think about that heat that I'm going to need tonight. So by thinking of that, that means I'm not getting myself wet, I'm not standing out in the open and letting the wind go by me. I'm making sure I have lots of food, lots of water. I'm keeping my fuel burning, keeping myself warm. Now here's something to guard against. And this is mostly psychological. But I see it get people over and over and over again. And that is the tendency to hunker down. If I'm just a little bit cold, my mind is still with me and it's really easy to implement some of these things I'm talking about. Stay moving, right? So, I uh, want to keep my body moving. Maybe I have zero confidence that I could get a hand drill fire or I could get a bow drill fire. But I'm going to make up a set anyway because most of us that have tried these, we know you can get a really good workout trying to get a bow drill or a hand drill fire. And so, I'll sit there and try to get my hand drill and whoa, I'm warming myself up. But here's what happens to people is as the day goes on and I start to get a little bit cold, I get this tendency to want to hunker down. And when I start to hunker down, I'm still losing heat. And mentally, I kind of close in too. When this starts to happen to us, 
we begin to lose the will to do the things that we know will keep us warm. I'll see people when they're really cold, they'll try to get a fire, but it'll be just sort of half-hearted. Or, okay, yeah, you really convince them to get up and, and do a lap and they'll do one, but then they'll just hunker down again. That hunkering down, unless you're doing it in a very uh, well thought out shelter that's going to be conserving your heat, protecting you against conductive heat loss and, and convective heat loss, it's going to be keeping in your radiation, you're probably just going to get colder and colder and colder. So we have to guard against that tendency to hunker down. Stay moving, stay positive. Keep your mind working, keep your body working. What I'm not going to talk about today is the Wim Hof method or TUMO or other methods to keep yourself warm. That would be a different video. <laughs> but I will say that if you do cold conditioning, you're going to be better able to keep yourself warm. I see this with students out at Rewild University and what happens is even though I'm consciously cold conditioning back living in civilization, they living out in the woods without uh, any climate control, they begin to develop a cold conditioning that's superior to mine. And you can take cold showers. You can turn down the heat in your house. You can wear a layer less. You can drive with the windows open on your car when it's slightly uncomfortable. You can take ice baths if you want. Exposing yourself to the cold, it's going to grow brown fat, it's going to raise your metabolism, it's going to create a, uh, a stronger, more efficient furnace inside of you. And that's going to mean when you're out in this cold situation, you're going to be better able to generate that inner heat. So to put this all together, make sure you're doing your cold conditioning. When you go out, be thinking about wearing the proper clothing, right? Wool, not cotton. Think about protecting yourself from the radiant heat loss, from conductive heat loss, con convective heat loss, Think about making sure that there's good fuel, food, water in your body. If you need to keep warm, move your body. Make sure you don't break into a sweat. If you break into a sweat, then you're going to be evaporating and you're going to be losing heat. And that's going to be a losing game. So learn to exercise, move your body in a way that brings you right to the edge. Not to perspiration, but so that uh, your body is working and keeping you warm. Most important of all, guard against the hunkering down. Don't let that happen to you. It's a very powerful mental force that urges us to just curl up and get colder and colder. Don't let it happen. Stay moving, stay positive. As we're getting colder, we have to look at the tools we have we can't look at the things we've lost, right? So my hands are too cold to hold the stick because, because they're so numb, but I might be able to hold the stick with my wrists. I still have tools. When we're trying to start a fire or gather things, what are the tools you have? And that, again, is where our mental, our positive attitude, that is the best tool we have. So hopefully this video has given you uh, a better understanding of how we become cold. And it's given you some tools for staying warm even when you can't get that fire going and the conditions are kind of crappy like this. Share stories of times when you've been cold. How have you kept warm? If it's certain pieces of gear, that's fine. Share that. You know, what's, what's your favorite kind of windbreaker or baklava or, or 
you know, <laughs> hat or whatever you use to keep yourself warm. Any other tips or tricks that you have for keeping warm when you can't get a fire going and the conditions are just right for sapping the heat right out of us. Can't wait to learn from you, see what you have to say, talk with you in the comments.